Hi, my name is Tim, and in this short video, I'm going to guide you through the proper process for diagnosing a faulty electric heater on the heat pump simulator. Now, the electric heater is shown right here, and it's in the plenum or the supply ductwork of the heat pump, and the heater provides auxiliary or supplemental heat when the capacity of the heat pump cannot keep up with the heat loss from the residents. We're going to begin by clicking on the thermostat to make sure it's calling for heat. So we're gonna click on the selector switch and this will turn the temperature setting up as well. And we wanna make sure that we turn the temperature up well above the set point so that we ensure that both stages of heat are activated. Next, we're gonna click OK on the procedure guide and we're gonna take a brief inventory of which electrical loads are operational. And we're gonna begin at the indoor unit and check the blower operation. And as we can see here, the blower is operating. So we click OK here and click yes that the blower is operating. Next, we're gonna to proceed to the outdoor unit and we're gonna remove the cover. And when we do this, we can easily verify that both the compressor and the outdoor fan motor are operational. So after clicking okay and yes that the outdoor fan is running and yes that the compressor is running, we need to check the electric heater now. So our three major loads are operational, but again, when it's cold outside, uh, the capacity of the heat pump will not be able to keep up with the heat loss and it's going to be necessary to turn on additional heat in the form of the electric heaters. So we're going to click on the control panel, cover and remove it and click OK. And next we want to check and see if the heaters are actually drawing current. Now we can do this very easily by using the clamp on ammeter and placing it around one of these black wires at the top of the auxiliary heat relay. You can actually do it anywhere on these black wires that lead up to the heater, but we're going to do it right at that glowing orange hot spot here. And when we do this, we see we have zero amps, so our electric heater is not drawing current, meaning it's not functioning. Now, before we proceed any further, let's take a look at the wiring diagram and come up with a list of possible causes of this malfunction. Now, to begin with, if we look at the thermostat, we have this W2 terminal right here. This is our second stage heat, and this will provide 24 volts out of the W2 terminal when the temperature in the space falls two degrees below the set point of the thermostat. You now this makes a determination that it's not keeping up with the first stage heat on and it would be necessary to activate second stage. So we could have a malfunction in the thermostat here at the W2 terminal. We could also have a malfunction in the auxiliary heat relay itself right here. And then if we go to the line voltage diagram, we can see our electric heater is right here in the center and it's provided power through these auxiliary heat relay contacts. So again, we have a possibility of the thermostat, the auxiliary heat relay, or the electric heater itself. So this is a pretty simple one. We've only got three possible causes. Now our next step after verifying that we have no amperage, we're gonna click no on the procedure guide and we're gonna verify that we have 24 volts at the auxiliary heat relay coil. And we're just gonna place our leads at the white and blue connections here of the coil of this relay. Now this will verify that the thermostat is sending 24 to the coil. And as we can see by the meter, we do in fact have 24 volts. So this eliminates our thermostat as a possible cause of the malfunction. We're gonna click yes on the procedure guide. And our next step is to ensure that the contacts of the auxiliary heat relay are closing and that we also have line voltage coming into it. So we're gonna take our meter leads and we're gonna place them at the line voltage connections at the bottom of the auxiliary heat relay. And this will just verify that we have 240 volts entering the relay, which we do. And again, this just ensures we don't have a loose connection somewhere in one of these wire nuts uh, coming into the unit. So after clicking yes on the procedure guide, we want to verify that the contacts in the auxiliary heat relay closed. So we can simply measure at the load side or the top with our meter leads to ensure those contacts are closing. And when we do that, we do have 240 volts. So this verifies that the auxiliary heat relay is good. It's sending power to the electric heaters. So this most likely indicates we have a fault, the electric heater, or possibly a loose connection at the heater connections. So after clicking yes on the procedure guide, we're gonna remove the cover from the electric heater. And when we do this, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. You can see the two connections here. Now, once we've opened the heater cover, click OK. And our next step is to disconnect it. But before we do that, we wanna turn the power off. Very, very important. You don't wanna work on any live circuits. So after turning the power off, disconnect the heater wires by clicking on them. 
And when we do this, this will isolate the heaters and we can take a resistance check and verify if there's continuity or if there's a path for current flow through the heaters. So once we've disconnected, click OK on the procedure guide and we're gonna take out our own meter at this point and we're gonna measure the resistance of the electric heaters. Now, on this particular bank of electric heaters, the normal resistance is 8 ohms. Now, typically, you're not going to know that unless you know the wattage of the heaters, uh, but you're generally looking for a measurable resistance here. Uh, a reading of infinite resistance, as currently shown in the meter, would indicate that the heater is open. So let's place each of our leads at the glowing orange hotspots at the heater connections. We're going to drop our red lead here on the top, and we're going to drop our black lead here on the bottom connection. And when we do this, we verify that we have infinite resistance across the heater, which indicates that we have an open circuit within the heater. So the heater is going to have to be replaced here. So our next step is to click OL, and that just indicates infinite resistance on the digital meter. And next we need to replace the heater. Simply click on the heater, click replace on the menu, and that solves our problem here. Now, it's going to be necessary, obviously, to reconnect the wires and turn our power back on. Click OK on the procedure guide, and you're gonna to wanna to watch one full cycle of operation to make sure everything works properly, and then go up to the residence and verify that heat is being received at the floor register here, and we can see as evidenced by this red graphic that we do in fact have sufficient heat here now in the residence. Now, if you're confused on any of these steps we just took, simply click this top left icon and you'll be able to review each step that we just took in this process. Good luck on all your future service calls and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Do you want to try 3D simulations and VR HVAC training yourself? Then visit interplaylearning.com to start a free trial today.